Hello everyone and welcome to the Game of the Day presentation for Round 6 of the 2017 British Chess Championship. I'm Andrew Martin and today's featured game simply has to be the eagerly awaited Ward 1 clash between Luke McShane playing white and David Howe playing black, two of the strongest players in the tournament coming head to head. A game of enormous competitive significance. Of course it's a great advantage to be white in such a game. Um, it's a pity that yesterday the game between Howe and Jones was agreed drawn so early. Of course Jones being black would be relatively happy with that. Howe with white slightly puzzling that he agreed a draw so soon and now he finds himself with black against Luke McShane. Not an easy task at all even for somebody so strong as David Howe. So this would be the second day in succession where McShane is able to play his Tarash French. He beat Merriman yesterday with a Tarash. Now he repeats the experience against Howe. And Howe decides to play c5. The most fluid move in the position. Black just tries to free up his game straight away. White plays knight f3. And black takes on d4. This is supposed to be the most accurate move order for black in this particular position. Because after knight takes d4, knight c6. White's got to worry about his unprotected knight on d4. In order to maintain momentum, White should play bishop b5 here, black unpins. And now, a slightly surprising move, knight takes c6, because, well, after b takes c6, black reinforces his centre. But White's quite happy to drop the bishop back to d3, and um, he obtains a, a pretty nice position by doing so. But how plays queen to c7? Well, of course, this has been seen many, many times. Uh, quite an okay variation for black, and you can choose between playing queen c7 or maybe putting the bishop on d6. This may transpose to the game, but it may not, as black could play knight e7 here, for instance, instead of queen c7, just allowing white to play e5. This has happened uh, a number of times, <coughs> and, um, you know, black seems to be quite well placed after castling. But as you'll see, this is radically different to what actually happens in our featured game. So Howe plays queen to c7, white goes queen to e2, that's the best square for the queen, and now bishop d6, knight f3. And with white thinking about the move e5, black goes into action by taking on e4. Now clearly this is a move with pluses and minuses. You know, the plus is of course that you get active play. White's got to recapture with one of his pieces and then the black knight comes out to f6 with gain of time. The drawback is, well, you're breaking up your pawn formation. Howe obviously feels that the activity that he gets by drawing the white queen out into the open is sufficient to negate the pawn weaknesses. And in fact, this has been seen again many times with OK results for black. And now key move here, h6. I like this move. Um... And the idea behind it is, in certain variations, to try to prove that the white queen is offside on h4. It's all very well if black castles short in this line, the queen will be very well placed. But black's not going to castle short. In fact, he may conduct this game with his king on e7. And this makes the whole variation very interesting indeed. Well, white just played bishop d2. Again, a non-committal move, just getting the pieces out. Maybe white's going to just play bishop c3. He could castle, as was seen in the game Navarra versus Potkin, Tallinn, 2016. And there black played king e7 straight away. White went rook e1, and now g5. Well, you can see the move h6 spices the position up a bit. And um, I think black is in perfectly good shape here. Uh, he went on to win this game in 31 moves. Let's just see how this game went on for a few moves. White played queen to c4, c5. Black brought his rook to b8. The other rook across to d8. White tried to break in and now bishop b5. With a perfectly satisfactory position for black. Rather a sharp position. And um, quite difficult for white to break into black's king. Anyway, McShane prefers bishop d2. We don't know yet where white is going to castle. c5. 
and now McShane makes the game completely different to the last one by casting on the queen side, a much sharper procedure. I know many who would draw away from that move because, uh, well, it's very easy for Black to bring a rook to the open b-file, pounding down on b2. But McShane obviously feels he can cover any black attack that's coming. So how does play rook b8? White centralises his pieces nicely with rook h e1, and now bishop c6. Well, this position is uh, it's quite okay for black. Probably suited both players. Um, both players want to win this game, clearly. And uh, they've produced a very sharp position. Bishop c3. And now how plays bishop takes f3. G takes f3, and now bishop f4 check. Again, a very interesting move. Trying to strand the white queen offside. I'm sure Black's hoping to get some sort of queenside attack going with the white queen way out west, out of play. Let's see if he can achieve it. Well, king to b1. And now Black played king to e7. Again, very thematic in this line. Now, could he have played knight to d5? This is uh, quite an interesting possibility. It looks impossible at first sight because white can take on g7. But black's idea is to play rook g8. And suddenly it's quite difficult for white. His pieces are clumsily placed. In particular, this bishop on g7 is a bit, uh, is a bit weird. And uh, knight c3 check is, is coming into the frame. Of course, white can try moves like bishop c4 here. But then comes bishop g5. And we've got a rather interesting uh, position on our hands here with um, white having to make some, some difficult choices. For instance, if he goes queen h5, black can play knight f4. Going back, if he plays queen e4, we take on g7. And now, however white takes on d5, black's going to play king f8. I mean, let's just see this. Bishop takes d5, king f8 with um, quite an interesting position. Opposite colour bishops, yes, white's a pawn up, but it's an insignificant pawn, and black has an initiative. Well, both players were using up lots of time, so obviously the calculation of these variations was proving quite difficult. In the end, black plays king e7, and now McShane plays a good move, b3. Again, carefully calculated, I think. Well, rook h d8 now. A move that makes perfect sense, bringing the last piece into the game. But, can black play c4 here? Well, in the commentary room, we thought that uh, after that, white had to take on f6. Black recaptures. And now white can actually take this pawn on c4. With the point that, when black takes, white goes rook e4. What we didn't see, and I've only discovered this subsequently, is that black can play the amazing move rook hd8 here. Which I think probably means that um, c4 is actually playable. And I think if white takes the queen, it leads to a draw straight away. Let's see this. Rook takes d1, king b2, and then this uh, strange perpetual with the bishop. Of course, White's king can't come to the d file because of bishop g5 discovered check. Can White improve on that line? Well, let's go back to rook hd8. I mean, he can try and anchor the position by going rook de1. And after that, Black can choose between queen c7 and bishop g5, which both lead to the same type of double rook end game where White's a pawn up, but at the same time, is he really going to win this position after rook d2? Well, that's an interesting line. Um, <clears throat> I don't know how much of that the players saw. Uh, rook hd8 is difficult to see for any class of player, I would say, especially when you're coming into serious time trouble. So how sticks with rook hd8? Bishop comes back to b2, safety play, and rook comes into d5, just centralising. Bishop b2 was not a... 
an unimportant move because if black plays rook b4 here, I'm sure white was intending to go c4. So moving the bishop out of the way to b2 was actually quite important. So rook d5 before c4 happens. McShane plays rook e4 and now comes rook f5. Clumsy looking move, but one which was born out of severe time trouble. What else could black do? Well, he could go bishop g5. Note the rook on e4 is legitimately on pre here. So, for instance, after queen g3, white's probably got to take queen g3, bishop takes f6, check, bishop takes f6. And now, let's say, h takes g3. I would say this is roughly equal. I mean, black's got whatever initiative there is here, but um, it looks pretty equal. Maybe David Howe should have done that, I don't know. But rook f5 looks, looks a bit clumsy, doesn't it? Well, according to the machines, the best way here is to put the rook on c4. Rook d8, trying to survive by tactics, and now rook to g1. And apparently this leads to advantage for white. McShane instead plays his rook across to a4 because of course Luke was getting into time trouble as well. Black puts his other rook in the middle and now rook to g1 was answered by rook to g5. This should still be okay for black but he goes wrong now with knight to h5. And I'm sure Howe's instinct told him that was probably not the right move but he had hardly any time at all at this point. And apparently, once again, the best move is to centralise the knight with knight to d5. Again, a very difficult move to play with no time. Because, well, you're allowing white to take on g7. But it turns out after that, f6 is a good move. And if queen takes h6, rook to g8. Perhaps it's that move that Howe missed with no time at all. Suddenly the white pieces are at the ends of the earth. And uh, he faces numerous threats. Just dropping back, after knight d5, can white do better, for instance, with a move like rook to g1? Why should he take on g7? Well, then I think it's best for black to step out of the pin. White plays rook g4. And now I think we can just play for centralisation and coordination by taking the rook, going f6, well, he's got to bring his rook back into the game and now something like queen to d6. And this should be okay for black. At least it will be easier than the game, I think. So, knight h5. Bishop takes g7. McShane swoops. Black must take. And now rook takes f4 is the point. How gets out of the pin. And now this consolidating move, rook g4. Again, playing it safe. Well, these machines, they're so good, you know. Rook h5 was one of the suggestions. Queen f6, and now knight to e8. But apparently, in this position, we go queen h8 check, and now the splendid move, bishop g6. I urge you to investigate this line a bit more closely, but uh, apparently it's very strong for white. As if black takes, we simply recapture. And the black king is in a hell of a mess. Well, once again, rook takes g4. We can't blame him for playing that move, but after f takes g4, rook d4, queen takes h6, white is well on top now. Rook takes g4 was answered by another good move, h3. And with no time at all, with flag hanging, black plays c4. A desperate, desperate strike. What can he play? Well, can he survive with queen h2? That's the computer first choice. But after that, we get some very long-range moves by white. Queen h8 check, king e7, and now queen a8. The, mobili the mobility of the white queen is, is striking. And uh, more or less finishes black off. If queen takes h3, we've got another splendid move here, rook h1. White can operate at length on both sides of the board. And I don't think there's any way back here, because white's sweeping up the black pawns. Rook h7, winning for white. 
So in no time, C4. McShane's happy to take the rook. Takes, takes. Queen C3, Queen E3. And at this stage, I think black could have resigned. But when you've got no time at all, there's not even enough time to resign. So the game goes on with basically white cleaning up and there's black, nothing black can do about it. So there are a few more moves, but they're inconsequential. It's just McShane showing a little bit of technique. Just taking off all of black's pawns. Queen E5, 7, E4, D4, Queen F4, Queen F6 check. And that was the end of the game. How resigned. Well, that was very interesting. Um, very sharp struggle. And that's exactly what we want. Um, the crowd were really entertained by that game. Congratulations to Luke McShane, but Howe played his full part <coughs> in what was um, a fascinating encounter.